Hello, everyone, and uh, it's wonderful to see you. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Sho Schmitzman, and I'm here in Israel. Although I have an American accent, I was born in the U.S., but I've spent most of my life in Israel. And I'm excited to share with you about the hope and the work that we're doing to reconstruct and to help people and to try to ease the pain that this whole country and all of you, of course, are going through. We have a short uh, video. Uh, we'll just put that on, showing a little bit of what we did just today, and then I'll continue from there. That was uh, 1,400 boxes where uh, we distributed, we organized today into boxes, 1,400 of non-perishables that are going to people that have not left their homes in 12 days. We're talking about senior citizens. We're talking about Ukrainian immigrants and, of course, uh, underserved uh, populations that have uh, special needs. So. Just so we all understand, Makom is a proud affiliate of Jewish National Fund USA. Makom is all about the people. We are a network of 280 communities across Israel that what we do day in and day out is we care for the people of Israel. What we do, we all have jobs, but we go above and beyond to help the people living around us. So if you think, from Kiryat Shmona in the north until Eilat in the south, we have these 280 communities where people are working all day and all night to see what they can do for these people to make their lives better. Now, this isn't a regular situation without the war. We're taking care of educational needs, we're taking care of social services, or we're taking care of underserved populations. But I can tell you, that within hours of the war that broke out, and I don't need to tell you about the horrible tragedies and the stories that we're all hearing almost every single day, the tra tragedies that we all experience because we all feel like it's our brothers and sisters. I'm gonna take you sort of uh, zoom out a little bit and, and try to share with you what it, what it looks like on a national perspective because we have communities across the board. We're talking about families outside of the Gaza envelope that lived their regular life until Saturday morning. And just like that, the world turned around and their husbands were called up. These are families that just like that, the husbands were called up for reserve duty. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of mothers and children that are at home and dealing with this new reality. Whether they have sirens and rockets, that's one thing. Whether they've taken in some family members from other parts of the country, that's another option. Some people have kids at home and say, well, what else can I do? Because my neighbor across the street or a friend or a relative, something happened to them, whether they were abducted um, and they're held hostage or God forbid, uh, killed, we're dealing with people all around us and it hasn't passed over anyone. We all know someone, somewhere, something. And I decided to share with you the story of what happened in Ofakim and share with you what it means to be part of Makom and how we took it to the next level. Now, I know we're all talking about the Gaza envelope and the people that evacuated but Ofakim, a small city of 30,000 residents, that was one of the towns that um, terrorists decided to, that was one of their targets. They skipped over a few smaller towns. And on Saturday last week, they decided that that's where they were going. Now, these 30,000 residents are 
about 25 kilometers from the border. So other than rockets, occasionally, usually there are no issues. 25 kilometers is about 15.5 miles. So it takes time to get there. Ofakim was caught by surprise. The southern part of the city, uh, which is where which is where the terrorists entered, they just started going house to house and they were massacring people. And it happens to be that in that neighborhood, we have our Macomb community. And I was talking to members from our Macomb community who were saying that when they started hearing shooting, they all took whatever they could. The people that owned weapons, they took their weapons. People that didn't were taking rocks from their backyards, uh, boulders, if they were able to lift them, doing whatever they can to basically prevent the terrorists from going further into the city. There were 14 terrorists and they killed 50 of their residents. Now this is a small town, everybody knows everybody. And this past week, there have been 50 funerals and shivas, which is all across town, whether it was uh, policemen, residents, soldiers, anyone that tried to assist. And what they've been doing in Ofakim this past week has been phenomenal. Not only do they understand that the whole city is traumatized, they brought in social workers and therapists from outside of Ofakim, volunteers from other parts of the country that are going house to house. And I wanna tell you something else. The people that experienced in their homes, the they were hearing the shootings outside, 12 days, they're still scared to leave their homes. So these are people that have decided, that did, they didn't decide. The, the reality was they haven't left. Now these people, they need food, they, they need basic necessities. And our Macomb volunteers have been knocking on doors, house to house, checking up on people, making sure in case anyone needs something, whether it's medication, food, clothing, any extra assistance, we'll bring the therapist to their house. We're going around town and we're making sure that everybody is taken care of. Many of the people of Ofakim decided to evacuate, but those that have stayed and haven't left their house, we're taking care of those people too. Now, just to put it on a, on a much larger perspective, we I don't have to tell you, because you all know, because you assisted with all this, getting people from, uh, from the war zone into other places, whether it's the Dead Sea hotels, the Arava, uh, Elot. People are currently hosting everywhere uh, across the country. But it's really hard to keep people busy for so many hours a day. And this is where other communities come into. We have communities of educators that they've been going around to the hotels and to into the communities that have uh, a, a large majority of evacuees. And they've been with the children, putting on activities for five, six hours a day, talking to the, to the, to the adults, helping them work through what they experienced, clothing, shoes, toys, whatever it is. There are the physical needs and then there's the emotional needs. And because we're all about community and we understand that being embraced by a community is really what makes a difference and is such a significant part of reconstructing and healing and moving forward, this is what we're doing across Israel. And just to throw out a few examples, we have Jerusalem communities in the north that is uh, that all their their simmers, their bread and breakfasts that they have, they're all filled up with people that evacuated. We have uh, people in different communities all across uh, all across the country. They're putting on meals, and I've heard about a few weddings this past week, and a brit, and all these different family events. They're being embraced by our communities, and we're trying to give these people as much as a normal life as possible during these excruciatingly painful times. Now, just to kind of uh, sum things up um, and give you some numbers so you can put it in perspective, at the moment, 
We're working across 30 cities in Israel. We're impacting the lives of over 20,000 people. Whether it's underserved populations, like I said, checking up on senior citizens and delivering food and medicine, uh, or providing educational activities for kids and teens. Um, but it's really uh, differentiating between the needs of those that were evacuated, who lost everything and need to start over again, and those that are still in their homes and somehow need to pick up the pieces of their shattered life and start over again. And I want you to understand that these towns that were so severely affected, these towns are like ghost towns. You go in there and other than the IDF, there's no one there. And these are places that were once alive and blooming. And our volunteers, like I said, were going down the streets and other than soldiers, we don't see anyone. And it's so important to make sure that every single person is being taken care of because we know that this is what's going to help them in the future. And I want to say that along with all the efforts of all our affiliates, we at Macomb strongly feel that we're the ones that fill in those gaps because nobody can do everything. And obviously we're not trying to do everything, but if we each do our small part in what we know how to do together, along with the significant support that we're getting from you through Jewish National Fund USA, this is what's helping us reconstruct Israel and setting the foundation for the future when we are able to start rebuilding and, and reconstructing these communities. And I'd like to end um, with something I happened to come across. Um, I'm not a religious person, but I happened to uh, come across um, in um, Yeshayahu, Isaiah, it says, um, um, shake yourselves from the ashes, from the dust and rise up. And I think this is really what we're all trying to do, whether it's you all in the United States or across the globe, our Jewish brothers and sisters, or us here in Israel, we're really trying to shake off this horrible tragedy that we experienced and trying to rise up and see what can we do. And we're each doing our part. And it's such an opportunity for all of us to be working together uh, united and making Israel strong and better again. And we each have a part in that. So thank you. <laughs>